Project Apollo was mankind's most ambitious hour. The technical hurdles that had to be overcome were simply mind-boggling. The sight of astronauts on the moon beamed all around the world was the ultimate reflection of the United States military and scientific prowess. But not everyone involved in the project was American. No, if it wasn't for us Brits, they may not have made it there and back at all. In the early 1960s, in the Western world, the UK was the number two space power. So there were a lot of talented people. So when NASA was needing all the help they could get, it was absolutely logical that the, the British contribution was as significant as it was. The work of one British scientist in particular was crucial to Apollo 11's success, Dr. Francis Thomas Bacon. Bacon's role was immense. The Apollo astronauts needed electricity and Tom Bacon's fuel cells provided that electricity. President Nixon said to Bacon after Apollo, Tom, without you we wouldn't have gotten to the moon. What Bacon designed was a simple, practical and reliable way of producing electrical power for the computers and heat for the humans in the Apollo command module. And the really clever thing was there was only one waste product, water. This is one of the original cells, now on display at Cambridge University. It was here in the laboratories of the Department of Chemical Engineering that Bacon conducted most of his vital work. When he first met you, he would ask you what your scientific and engineering interests were. If it had any bearing on the fuel cell, he was deeply interested. Uh, if it had no bearing, he would switch off immediately. <laughs> My father followed all the Apollo shots very closely because he was so concerned that in case fuel cells were giving any trouble. But actually, throughout the whole of the Apollo mission, they uh, performed faultlessly throughout. So this gave my father tremendous sort of pride and satisfaction. Uh, my mother was rather concerned that he was getting too tired. And she, he didn't actually see the first step on the moon. I think later on she slightly regretted that he hadn't actually seen this momentous moment when, when Armstrong put the, his first step on the moon. But what Bacon designed for a trip to the moon has eventually come right back down to Earth. Fuel cells are now powering phones, computers, planes, bikes, and cars. Dr. Bacon's fuel cells did their job perfectly on the three quarters of a million mile round trip to the moon. Today their direct descendants fitted in this little baby should give you over 200 miles driving time before you need to top up. So that's one small car but potentially one giant leap for transport.